The last few trips up to the cabin have been a real pain just getting into the cabin with the amount of snow that we have. Um, I've resorted to bringing all sorts of extra equipment like snow blowers and the snowmobile and I've got the big sleigh up there that I have to go and get and attach to the snowmobile and then go back and forth hauling gear from the truck. The truck's gotten stuck a number of times and it's a real pain and I'm tired of it. So I think we're going to simplify and we're going to build ourselves a little pole polk sled and whatever fits in the sled we're snowshoeing it in and that's what we're bringing until the snow is gone. So today we're going to build ourselves a little polk sled and uh, if you'd like to see how we're going to do that keep watching. So if you're uh, unfamiliar with a polk sled, a polk sled is uh, just a toboggan basically that you pull behind yourself uh, with your camping gear on it to get deeper into the woods um, and uh, so you can get you know where you want to go uh, in the winter time. Usually pull behind some snowshoes or, or cross country skis or something like that. So that's what we're going to build and whatever doesn't fit in our polk sled isn't coming uh, to the cabin next time. Uh, so what we're going to use for a base is uh, just this uh, pelican sled. Um, this is an old uh, toboggan that uh, we've had for a while. The boys have kind of outgrown it. They're kind of more into uh, their independent stuff like snowboarding and that kind of thing now. So, uh, so it's had its use in, for, uh, for pulling kids around and isn't really being used for that anymore. So that's what we're going to use. So first things first, we're going to get the rope off of here. And then we're going to start mounting up some of the pieces that, uh, that we need for this. Um, and uh, getting that ready. So I think what I want to do is um, mount uh, mount these eye hooks uh, sort of further off to the sides here in the front. Um, there's kind of a, you can sort of feel it kind of flexy here and then all of a sudden right about there it kind of sucks, you know, gets a little more solid. And I think if we get it a little wider it'll pull a little straighter and a little better. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to sort of drill two holes there and there. Um, just to, uh, to insert those guys and, and make those our pulling points. So let's do that. So what I've got is uh, just these eye hooks, or these uh, guys, and what we'll do is I'll go, I've got some large washers that are going to go on there, and that'll help to sort of spread out the weight of it, of that pulling. So I've drilled the hole just bigger than this, and that'll help as well. So I actually have to thread those through. I didn't have any shorter ones of these, so I hope these won't be too long, but I think they'll be okay. Just like that. And I want these kind of aiming forward this way as opposed to perpendicular that way. We'll make it parallel to the uh, to the sled this way. Okay, so I'm going to get that guy on there. We'll drop our big washer on, and then I've got a uh, I've got a, a nylon uh, nylock nut to put on there. So there's that one done, and uh, we'll do the other side as well. Okay, 
so there you can see our eye hooks are now uh, installed there, and uh, those will work just fine, just like that. Uh, the next thing we can do is uh, we can drill out some of these other holes in order to get some uh, loops put in there so we can start strapping some stuff down. We've already got some holes up in the front that were pre-drilled, so we'll use those as well. And uh, so we'll drill out the rest of these holes and then we'll show you how we're going to loop some uh, rope through there in order to uh, create some tie down. Awesome, so now we have a bunch of holes drilled and we've got our uh, eyelets in there. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, create some loops through these holes and, uh, and that will create some uh, spaces for some tie downs. So I got some cheap string from the dollar store, which I think should be more than sufficient for what we actually need here. So that'll be fine. So with about a 21, 22 inch piece of rope, whatever, um, you want to make kind of these loops like those. Um, and then those are going to get fed up through the bottom here and uh, become the loops across. So then those loops there are going to get fed up through the bottom of these holes like so and then we'll put another knot in the top as close down to the toboggan as you can get it Just like that. Okay? And we'll go all the way around all the different holes and we'll do one in each of those holes. We have straps all the way around our pull sled that we can lash things to. And that's going to be really handy uh, when we are trying to tie things down. It's a good system. It allows you to tie from point to point. If you wanted to use uh, bungee straps, you could use bungee straps from point to point. Um, but really, it's still very, very lightweight. Haven't added any real weight to it. And, um, and yet, we've got a bunch of tie down points that are going to be really useful. So, that's that. So, that's about uh, what we want to do with the sled itself. So, we're going to put that aside for now. And now we're going to build the uh, harness pieces. Um, that will uh, attach to your backpack or whatever it is that you're sort of carrying. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Okay, so now we're going to build the um, the uh, straps, basically, that go from the uh, from the sled to your waistband or to your uh, you know your. I'm going to connect mine to the uh, uh, waist strap on my backpack. Um, and, and that sort of thing. So all I'm using is some uh, conduit pipe. Um, the cheapest stuff, so that's the electrical stuff, is, uh, is pretty cheap. And uh, I think that was four bucks for a 10 foot length. Um, so I'm going to cut that uh, to that length. Now the length you want is going to be determined by how long your skis are, if you're going to be skiing with it, or your snowshoes. Have you got Ojibwe snowshoes, the long ones, or those Hurons, or short little fat bear paw ones, or whatever it is that you're snowshoeing with or skiing with. That's going to determine how much length, how far away you want your sled to be. 
and uh, so that's going to be up to you. I'm going to do mine about six and a half feet because I'm going to be using it with uh, my Huron snowshoes um, and probably uh, also with uh, my um, uh, Alti Hawk skis which are a little bit longer but not too much longer. So I'm going to go six and a half feet and uh, you're going to have to determine how long you think yours needs to be based on what your skiing is and stuff. What this does is it just keeps a rigid pull between uh, the sled and yourself so that when you're going downhill, the uh, sled isn't constantly trying to bang into your feet and, and run into you. Um, apparently it's a much more stable way to, uh, to sort of run your sled and we'll show you how that's done in sort of crisscross um, uh, sort of way of doing it uh, too. So we'll cut that and we'll get that built with the rope inside and then we'll uh, finish them off. So now that we have those cut to length, and we're happy with that, uh, we want to run a piece of rope down the inside of them. And for that I'm using a little bit thicker rope than I used for the, um, for the loops. Just because it's going to be pulling the weight. So, we will just run that down the line, fish it all the way to the other end, hopefully not get stuck along the way. And, There she is. All right. So give yourself a generous amount at either end to tie some knots. So I'll do the same as we did before, basically, and just tie a uh, loop knot. Just like that. The idea now is that these will just clip on there, and it'll only allow it to go so far. You know, it's got a bit of play there, but only so much. Um, so the idea is, is that it's not super rigid, but it's um, but it's rigid enough that it's going to stop the sled from moving forward on you. So attach both of those ends. Not the best place to be doing this. Just like that. So I think that's it for this one folks. I uh, hope you enjoyed the Polk sled build. We'll try it out next time we're heading up to the cabin and uh, see if a, a more minimalist approach to uh, getting into our place uh, is, is really what I'm after.